Hey guys, hope you're well. So here we have a grade 10 uh, maths literacy paper one, which was written by um, Northwest Province, November 2019. It's a 75 mark paper. It should take you no longer than one and a half hours. Now, if you would like to download the paper, just check the description below the video. Michael Smith, what an, what a, like a proper name. Hello, I'm Michael Smith. Michael Smith buys and sells lovebirds. Okay, um, okay, interesting. He currently has 80 yellow birds and he has 120 green birds. The birds are equally divided into five cages. Okay, how many lovebirds does Michael have in total? Well, he's got 80 yellow ones and 120 green ones. So we can say 80 plus 120 which would be 200. How many birds are in each cage? Well, they tell us that the birds are divided equally into five cages. So if you have 200 birds and you have five cages, how much would go into each one? Well, you could say 200, you could say here 200, divide that into five, and that would give you 40. So there would be 40, 40, 40, 40, and 40. Write the ratio of yellow birds to green birds. Give your answer in simplest form. Okay, so, so with the yellow birds, okay, so they said yellow to green. So we put yellow first where there's 80, and then green, there's 120. Now, how do we simplify? There are multiple ways that you could do this. All I want you to do is think about what number can fit into both of these. Now there are mo there's more than one answer, okay? So your friend might say this and your other friend might say that. What's nice about mathematics though is that if you just keep simplifying, it will get to the final answer. So you might say, Kevin, oh, and by the way, um, the fastest way to do it is to find the biggest number possible. So you might think of the number two. Now the number two can go into both of those, but the number two is really small and it's gonna take you a long time to get to the final answer. So what about the number 10? The number 10 can go into both of these. So the number 10 can go into here eight times, and the number 10 can go into here um, 12 times. Okay, now you restart your question. So what number do you know that can go into both of those? Well, you could try the number two, that will work. You could try the number four, that would also work. Let's try the number four. So we divide both of these by four, and that would give you two over here and three over here. Now, there is no number that you can divide both of these with. Some of you are like, oh, okay, if you can divide it by one. Yeah, I've heard that one many times, but that doesn't change anything. If you divide both of these by one, you're just gonna end up with two to three. You're not gonna get anywhere new. So that is your answer. Now, let's say, for example, you wanted to choose the number two in the beginning. Well then, number two can go into there 40 times and it can go into there 60 times. If you chose the number two again, it would go into there 20 times and there 30 times. If you chose the number two again, it would go into there 10 times and there 15 times. The number two cannot go into both of these numbers now. So then we could think of a different number. What about the number five? The number five can go into here twice, and the number five can go into there three times. Whoa, look at that, it's the same answer. So it doesn't matter what you choose, as long as you just keep simplifying until you cannot simplify any longer. And so the answer is two to three. One of Michael's birds came out of the cage and flew away. What is the probability that a yellow bird flew away. Give your answer as a decimal. Okay, so we know that probability is the total goes at the bottom, and then over here, you put what you want. Let's just say that, what you want. So we know that there's a total of 200 birds. Which one do we want? Well, we wanna know um, what is the probability that it was a yellow bird? Okay, so there's 80 yellow birds, so we just put 80. Now, if you go type this on your calculator, it'll give you 0, 0,4, 0, 0,4. Michael Smith buys and sells lovebirds. He currently has 80 yellow birds and 120 green birds. The birds are equally divided into five cages. The picture below shows the bird food that Michael gives to his lovebirds. He gives each cage, okay, so remember there's five cages, one, two, three, four, five. 
Now, in those cages, there's birds. So he gives each cage will receive one pack of sunseed bird seed. So here it is here. And 800 mils of water. Okay, so each of those is going to get one pack of bird seed and then 800 mils of water. So this one would also get one pack. I'm not going to do it for all of them, but you get the idea. 800 mils. They all get that, okay? First question, which make of bird seed does Michael give to his lovebirds? Uh, which make of bird seed? Well, that's like the brand name. So the brand name is Sunseed. So we can just say here, Sunseed. One pack of bird, seeds, bird seed sorry, weighs 1.3 kilograms. Okay, so one of these packs is 1.3. We can actually see it over there as well, 1.3 kilograms. Calculate how many kilograms of seed Michael gives to his five cages in one week. Right, so we have five cages. Now, every single day, because it says here, every morning, okay? So every morning, this one's going to get 1.3 kilograms. This one's going to get 1.3 kilograms. This one's going to get 1.3 kilograms. And like that. That happens every single morning. In one week, there are seven days. So this is every single day he does this. So in one day, in one day, he does 1.3 kilograms. Multiply that by five. And that'll give us 6.5 kilograms. But now in one week, you would have to then take that answer and then multiply that by seven. And that'll be 45.5 kilograms. This question says, convert 800 moles to liters. Now remember, we've spoken about conversions before. We've looked at how to convert mass, volume, distance. So this is going to be volume. We know that in volume, we've got kiloliters, we've got liters, and we've got milliliters. Now, in between those, there's a thousand, okay? Now, we've always spoken about this. When you go to the right, you, we multiply. When you go to the left, then we divide. So if we're going from milliliters, which is here, and we are going to liters, which is over here, so because we're going left, we will divide. So we will say 800 divide by 1000, and that'll give us 0 0.8. Michael Smith buys and sells lovebirds. He currently has 80 yellow birds and 120 green birds. The birds are equally divided into five cages. Michael has some special boxes in each cage, which his lovebirds breed and lay eggs in. The picture below shows the dimensions of one box. Each box is made of wood and has a circular opening through which the birds can climb into the box. Okay, um, the first question. The diameter of the circular opening is six centimeters. Calculate the radius of that hole. So here's a circle, right? So let's talk about that. We've got a circle. Now we know that the distance, and then, we, sorry, we also have a center of a circle. Now, the distance going right across is called the diameter, okay? Now, the, the, the distance that goes halfway, well, that is called the radius. So, they're telling us that the diameter is six centimeters. That means the radius would be half of that. So, the radius will be three centimeters. Calculate how big the circular opening of the boxes. Okay, so they want us to find the area of the circle. They want us to find the area. Now they've told us that the area of a circle is pi multiplied by radius to the power of two. And instead of saying pi on your calculator, they want you to use that. So we're gonna say area is equal to pi. Oh, sorry, we're gonna use 3.142. And then we're gonna multiply that by the radius, which is three, and then we're gonna square that. Okay, don't forget the square. A lot of students forget that. And then if we round that to two decimals, we're going to get 28.28. Now, this was measured in centimeters, so we'll say centimeters squared. So 28 point, whoopsie, 28.28 centimeters squared. Calculate the volume of one box. Use the formula length, width, height. Okay, so they want to know how much volume is inside this box. The circle does not um, does not 
change anything, okay? Volume means how much space do we have inside. So by having a circle on the outside, that's not gonna affect how much space we have on the inside. So it's very easy because they've given us the length, width, and height. And so we're just gonna go follow the formula. So the length is 17, the width is 13, and the height is 25. Go ahead, type that all in. And we get five, five, two, five. Now that would be centimeters to the power of three. Three because we've done it three times. Okay, the area of the floor of the box is 221. Let me show you how they did that. Um, you see at the bottom of this box, there would be a rectangle, right? If you had to look at it from the top, it's a rectangle. Now this length is 17 and this length is 13. Now to find the area of a rectangle, you just multiply those two. So let's try that quickly and just see that they are being correct. Yeah, if you multiply those two, you get two, two, one. Okay, so I'm just showing you where they got that from. Now they say the roof of the box is 8% larger than the floor area. So have a look here. Look at this roof. Can you see it's a little bit bigger than what we have on the floor? The reason is, is that there's these little pieces that are going over the edge. So it's a little bit bigger. So all we do then is we just see what is 8% of that number. So what is 8% of 221? Now you can do this in many ways, but if you type 8% on your calculator, if you type the percentage, it'll be 0 0.08. Now of means times. Now if you had to go work this out, you get 17.68. That's not the answer. That's just how much extra we have. So then what we do is we take the original, which is 221, and we plus the extra bit, and then we will get an answer. 238.68, so let's just write this nicely, 238.68, which writes it a bit better, 238.68 centimeters squared. Michael wants to build more boxes for his bird cages. Okay, so this, there's a guy who's got birds and he wants to build um, boxes for his bird cages. He makes a list of all the things that he'll need. He sets up a budget to determine all the items, how much all of the items will cost to build one box. So this is how much this guy's gonna need for one box. So for example, he needs some wood, um, he needs nails, he needs a stick, and he needs wood glue. Now for example, with the wood glue, he buys one bottle, and that's the price, okay? Now for example, a stick, he buys one stick, the price of a stick, and so there's the total. But now if you look here, I'm at this part here. For each box that he um, for each box that he builds, he needs nine nails. Now the price of a nail is 0 0.50. So if you're buying nine nails and each one is 0 0.50, how would you find the total price for that? Well, you would multiply them, and that's what they're doing over here to find the total, okay? That's what they're doing over there. So, and you can try that if you want. You can multiply these two and you'll see that you will get that over there. Okay, so the amount of wood that he needs is 0 0.2 meters squared and the price is 650 per meter squared. So think about this. If they're charging you 650 rand per meter squared, what does that mean? It means 650 rand for one meter squared. So what would happen if you have three meters squared? How much would that cost? Can you work that out for me? Well, that would be 650 multiplied by three. What if you had 10 meters squared? How much would that cost? Well, 650 multiplied by 10. So then what if you have 0 0.2 meters squared? Now all of a sudden people are like, uh, should we divide? No, look how we multiplied, look how we multiplied. So now we just keep multiplying. There we go. And if you had to work that out, and then that would end up giving us 130. So let me just write this down here, 130, and that would be there. But I've just realized I'm skipping all of the questions and I'm just getting too excited here. So let's start properly. First question, how much does one bottle of wood glue cost? Well, the wood glue is one bottle, 50 rand. So we can just say here, 50 rand. How many nails does Michael need to build a box? Well, it said there, nine per box. Calculate how much we've done this one now. So it's 130. Calculate the total expenses. Well, that's gonna be the wood, the nails, the stick, and the wood glue. So we can go add that all up. 130 plus 4 and 50 
plus 2 rand 50 plus 50 rand. And if we had to go calculate all of that, that'll be 187 rand. Okay, 187 rand. So this next question says, Michael has budgeted 2,000 rand to build boxes. How many boxes can he build with the new budget, with, with the budgeted amount? Well, that you're just going to say 2,000 divided by 187. Now, when you round off, you've got to be super, super careful. This gives us 10.69. Now, um, or 695. Now, a lot of you are going to round this up to 11. But you cannot, uh, well, I know that normally if you had to round this, it would go to 11. But sometimes when we're looking at real life examples, like this person who's building up boxes, you can't just round up or down according to the way we've been taught. You have to think about this carefully. They tell us that with that amount of money, he can only build 10.6 boxes. Now you can't build 0.6 boxes. So this guy's only gonna be able to build 10 boxes. You cannot round that up to 11. He does not have enough money for that. So he will only be able to build 10 boxes and he might have a little bit of money left over. Michael sold some of his love birds to buy other birds. He sold, his bir he sold the birds for 25 rand each the table below shows the amount of money. Okay, so it's a guy who's selling birds. Um, okay, so if you sell zero birds, then you're going to make zero rand. If you sell one bird, and don't worry guys, this graph, I'm going to make it a lot bigger just now. Um, if you sell one bird, then you make 25 rand. If you sell two birds, then you make 50 rand. Because each bird is 25 rand, so 2 times 25 is 50. Uh, 10 multiplied by 25, 250. 20 multiplied by 25, 500. You see, so if you sell five birds, then you say five multiplied by 25, and that'll give us 125 rand. So oh, I keep, um, I often do this. I, I jump to the end of the question, or well, I jump to this one <laughs> before doing the first question. My bad, let's just quickly fill it in anyways. So we can just say here, one, 25. Okay, name the independent variable. The independent variable is this one that's at the top over here. That's going to be number of birds. Okay, 3.3. Uh, Use the table above to draw a line graph on the answer sheet. Okay, so let's make this bigger now. Okay, so it said use the table above to draw a line graph on the answer sheet and then clearly label all the axes. Okay, that's very important. You always have to have three things, a heading, a y-axis, and a x-axis. Okay, so the number of birds, your independent always goes down here. Your dependent variable always goes over there. So here we could say number of birds. And then over here, we could say um, money received from sales and then put a bracket to say it's in rand okay now we're just going to go fill everything in so zero zero that would be over there now if there's one bird then there's 25 rand so how do we do this well um let's just see here here's a hundred and here's zero so 20 40 60 Oh no, that doesn't work. You see, I, I thought it was 20, 20, 40, 60, but that doesn't work. So it's maybe 25, 25, 50, 75, 100. There we go. It's very important that you get your spacing correct and you understand what they were doing. So they're using 25 for each line, okay? So 25 rand would be here and one bird would be here. So where those two intersect would be there. Okay, and then it's 2 and 50, so 2 and 50, which would be there, 3, I mean, sorry, 5, and then we had 125, so 5 would be up there, and then 125, so where they intersect, there we go, and then 10 and 250, so 10 go up, 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 and then 250, that would be 225, 250, so go across, boom, where they intersect. Okay, and then 20 and 500. So let's go across at 500. Let's go up at 20. And where they intersect, that's where your dot is, okay? Um, so it says, um, use the table to draw a line graph. Okay, so we're going to put a line through this now. Obviously, you would have a ruler. So yours would look much better than this. 
that's not too bad. Um, clearly label the, okay, so we gave a Y axis, we gave an X axis, and now we need to have a, um, a heading. So we could say here, money received from bird sales. Something like that, okay? Um, so we've got a heading. We've They said give it a suitable heading. So there's many ways to do that. We have a Y axis, an X axis, and we have the graph. Fantastic! Is the number of birds discrete or continuous? Well, we've spoken about discrete and continuous before. And pretty much discrete is when you can... Um, when you can count the data and then continuous is when you must measure the data. So if you're busy measuring the heights of people in your, in your class, well, that's measuring. So that's continuous. When you are counting things, that's discrete. So do you count the birds or do you measure the birds? You count the birds. So that would be discrete. Michael and his brother Peter went to Durban during their annual vacation to visit family. During the vacation, they explored Durban and they visited a few places. The table below shows three activities they did with each one's cost and times. Okay, so they went to the Moses Mabida Stadium. That was 50 Rand per person. Or, or, and then they also could have spent 70 Rand per person for the Sky Car cable car ride. They went to a shark marine world. Hey, I've been there. I was there. I was there in the very early days when it first opened. It must have been like... Uh, 2006, I think, I went to a shark marine world. I was, um, I think I was in grade five. No, then it wasn't 2006. I lie. It was, and it had just opened. We were one of the first schools. I was on a school tour, and we were one of the first schools. Um, just give me a second. Grade 12. Duh, 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 duh. Okay, I understand. Grade five. Yeah, it was 2004. 2004. Um, I think that's when a shark marine world opened. And, um, I went there. It was so much fun. Um, right. So Shark Marine World uh, from, okay, so they went there from there to there. It's 210 person and they got the wet and wild. I remember that. They had that um, package then already. Excellent. Um, take a trip to, okay, then they did take, take a trip to Umgeni um, steam train and there's the times, blah, 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 260 rand per person. Okay. First question. Um, calculate the total cost per person to visit the Moses Mabida, Moses Mabida Stadium and to take a ride on the Sky Car cable car. Okay, well, to go to the stadium, it's going to be 50 Rand. And then to use the cable car, it's 70 Rand. So for one person, for one person, they'll have to spend 50 Rand plus 70 Rand, which is 120. But then it says calculate the total. Oh, it does, it does say calculate the total cost per person. They're not asking for both of them. It's for per person. So that will be, um, let me write that a bit better, 120. This one, which one of the three activities cost the least per person? Well, that's definitely the Moses Mabida Stadium because look at this, 210 Rand, 260 Rand. So this is only 120 Rand. So we'll say Moses Mabida Stadium. Michael and Peter took the afternoon ride with the Umgeni steam train. Okay, so they did the afternoon one. Okay, how long did the ride take? Well, the ride goes from 12.30 until 4 o'clock. So you can just make sure you understand this, but you should eventually end up with 3.5 hours, three and a half hours. And of course, you could also say um, three hours. Come on, where's my pen? Why is it doing, why is it acting weird? You could also say three hours and 30 minutes. Okay. During the brothers' visit to a shark marine world, they went to a restaurant. Okay, so we've got two brothers and they went to a restaurant and they received the following bill. Use the restaurant slip above to answer the questions. First question, Moyo. Ah, I've been to that place as well in Oshaka. I remember that. Yeah, you like walk out of Oshaka and then you walk across like this bridge type thing. Yeah, I was very young. I don't live in Durban anymore, but I used to live close to Durban, Ladysmith. <laughs> so, uh, what is Moyo Oshaka's restaurant's telephone number? Telephone number, there we go. 031 032 which month did Michael and Peter, so those are obviously the brothers, which month um, did they go on holiday? Okay, 
kill here. We can see there's a date here, 28th of the 9th. That is September, my birthday month. Yeah. Okay, what flavor of milkshake did one of the brothers drink? Okay, so there's a lamb bunny chow. Okay, that that's, that could be the milkshake. Okay, no, I'm joking, guys. Obviously, it's not. <laughs> there's the chocolate milkshake. Okay, so it's a chocolate milkshake. Calculate only the VAT amount of their meal. All right. So here's the total that they spent, but that already includes the VAT. Now, remember, I've showed you guys how do we include VAT or take away VAT like this. So remember, when we use VAT as 15%, then you can just use these um, things over here. So we already have VAT. VAT is already included. So to remove the VAT, divide by 1.15. So we're going to say um, 258.50 divide by 1.15. And that'll give us 224 rand and 78 cents. That's not the answer. That is the amount without VAT. So here's the amount with VAT. Here's the amount without VAT. So how much VAT is there? Well, just minus those two numbers. If you minus them, you get 33 rand and 72 cents. 33 rand and 72 cents. Okay, this next one says, it is common to give 10% of your total bill as a tip to waiters. Calculate the tip rounded to the nearest rand. Okay, so the total bill came up to 258.50, 258.50. So you take that amount and you add 10%. So you, you take 10% of that. So 10% of 258.50. Now, if you type this on your calculator, it'll give you 0 0.1. And then of means times. And then 258.50. Go ahead, work this out. You end up with 25 rand and 85 cents. And then I nearly forgot, they said round it to the nearest rand, and so that would go to 26 rand. During Michael and Peter's holiday, they went to the movies. I love going to the movies, guys. The seating plan of the theater is given on the annex show. Okay, so I've gone and obtained it over here. Study the layout of the seating plan and answer the questions that follow. Okay, so here's where the screen is. Right, how many rows does this movie theater have? Okay, so how many rows does it have? Well, there's one row, two rows, three rows, four rows, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve rows. How many seats are there in row G? So in row G, one, two, three, four, there's six over there, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then it goes all the way up to 22, and then it goes up to 28. Okay. So we can just say uh, 28. How many seats are reserved for wheelchair use? Okay, so wheelchair use um, would obviously be these little blue ones over here. Those are wheelchairs, okay? So that's gonna be one, two, three, four, five, six. I think the question paper actually had a little key. Hold on. Oh no, it actually didn't. But anyways, we can see that these are wheelchairs. So as we said, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so there's six wheelchairs. If you move from seat D8 to D15, D8, where are you, D8? D8 to D15, how many seats did you move to the right? Well, that's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Name one seat number that is furthest from the screen. Okay, so if here's the screen, then you can choose anything in the back row. Okay, so for example, you could choose... Um, what's this? M3, M3, M3. 